Hi, I'm Dave. Today we're going to look at a Swift Model 839, a 60 millimeter uh, refractor from the 1960s or so. Uh, and it's got some very odd, interesting, and unique features about it. One of the first things you'll notice is the color. And if you looked at my Swift Model 838 video, uh, you will notice that the color is almost the same. But when I compare them next to each other, you'll see that there's a subtle little difference here. It's 810 millimeters, so it's a fast, pretty fast little telescope, and it's very tiny, very diminutive. One of the interesting things about this is that the mount for this scope is almost exactly the same as the 50 millimeter, and both mounts feature, or don't feature, slow motion controls, which uh, sounds like a definite downside, but really is not. If it's well made, Something like this can track reasonably well, assuming it's lubricated properly, and it can track pretty well at uh, a modest power. You wouldn't want to run this at 400 or 500 power. Well, of course, you're never going to run a scope like this at that power anyway. Let me show you how easy it is to move this thing. If you're looking at something, and typically you're going to use a small refractor maybe for looking at something uh, on the ecliptic, something about like that. Now if you balance this properly, which is very doable because this thing has a clamshell, you can slide the scope back and forth so you can balance it nicely. And once you get it balanced, oh, you can also rotate it like so if you prefer. So it's, uh, suppose you're looking at uh, Jupiter. And I'm looking up here, and if I want to track with this thing, even at maybe 100 power, 150 power, I just have to give it a little shove. And it works pretty darn well. It's not bad at all. Uh, and the convenience of not having to fumble around and look for the, for the slow motion knobs is actually pretty darn nice. It's not bad at all. So it's a, it's a nice trade-off. It's a nice compromise. And it made the telescope a little bit uh, simpler to use. So that's how that works. And of course, if the finder isn't where you want it, you can move it. You loosen the clamp, slide it back and forth like so. Put it over there. There's the little finder. The finder has a very interesting and unique mount. And let me show you that in a close-up video I made. This is the packing scheme for the little Swift 60mm scope. The legs are packed in here. Top. And then uh, there's a box inside here with eyepieces, Barlow, Pearl Prism. The finder is stored over here. This is where the mount goes. And these little um, sort of brackets are locked in there. So, once you remove that, pull this out. The mount. Now we have the mount head. This is the clamp for the finder. It's going to go on there and go around the tube. This is the OTA. And last but not least, tripod head and some assorted nuts and bolts. Here's the finder clamp. This thing is it's got some good things and some bad things. It's nice that you can move it around wherever you want. But I think a design flaw with this thing is that once you pull this off, 
you got several little pieces here. This comes right off. That is very easy to lose. Similar situation with this. Those are pretty easy to lose. Here's the very nice clamshell. This is quite reminiscent of Takahashi. It looks exactly like a Takahashi. Swift and Takahashi are closely related. Sometimes uh, you know, many of these early Swifts were probably made by, made by Takahashi, at least some components. Certainly these mounts, you know, a lot of the features here look exactly like Takahashi. The mount has the benefit of being extremely simple. This just slides right in like that. And you have a retaining screw here, so like that. You can lock it down. And if you loosen that a little bit, you can rotate the whole thing around, like so. And then lock it down so that you can find uh, north pretty easily. Then, of course, for polar alignment, you're going to loosen this guy here. You're not going to get a real precise polar alignment here, but you don't need one for a little scope like this. You'll get very, very adequate tracking if you're even somewhere close to the pole. All I Generally, all I do is just basically aim these things north and I'm done. Okay, now I've got the Swift Model 839 set up to next to the Model 838 50mm scope. I think right away you can detect that they are almost identical in many respects. This mount, this equatorial mount, is just for all practical purposes identical to this one. These uh, the sizes, everything here is is absolutely correct. I just noticed <laughs> something funny uh, when I I took this apart to lubricate it and grease it. When I did that, I put the setting circle on <laughs> backwards. So I'll uh, I'll have to fix that. Maybe I'll make a little video to show you how that works. Uh, now, there is one big difference that I think you can see. Uh, I hope it's obvious uh, uh, on your uh, monitor, but this color is quite a bit different than this. This is a very nice creamy white. This is almost a, almost a pink or salmon color. It's a, kind of an off tone, and it's not, it hasn't been repainted. This is the original paint for this. And Let's see how difficult it is to take this little mount apart. The setting circles are wrong here. This setting circle should be flipped so that it matches up with that little vernier pointer there. I think this is going to be pretty easy. I'm not sure, but I think so. Have to loosen that up enough. You can see where I maybe over greased it. <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty greasy. Now this needs to go on here. Something like that. With that lubrication. You also want to make sure that it's not, don't tighten it down too tight. Play with a little bit. And you probably don't want to tighten this down too tight. You just want it a little snug to hold its position. This thing is obviously bent slightly. Let's fix that. It should be more like about like that. Pretty good. <laughs> Would you ever use those setting circles? I wonder if it's really a vernier. Let's look at it and see if it's really a vernier. Boy. <laughs> 
No. <laughs> it's not enough there to be a, a decent vernier. Well, <laughs> you're probably not going to use this with setting circles anyway. They're there for mostly for decoration. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Swift Model 839 60mm telescope. Thank you for watching.